Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the 3-8 Podcast. I'm Jerts, and today joining me is Public Enemy 5-9, a.k.a. Los. Uh, what's up? <laughs> we're short on the other two. JP, uh, his wife's birthday is today, and JD is a no-show. He's MIA. I think he's lost somewhere in his house. Who knows? But we're going to roll on with the show and get it popping with gaming. <laughs> Game over. So, oh man, let me turn on my headphones for this one because, oh man, I really need to hear myself. Rockstar shuts down GTA 5 and, Art and Red Dead Redemption 2 servers for two hours this past uh, week. Uh, of course, this past week has been uh, really racially charged. Uh, we're definitely going to be talking about the Black Lives Matter movement that's going on. Uh, and this is just part of that. Um, was it Rockstar decided to, you know what, shut down the the servers for two hours, kind of a kind of like an honor for George Floyd for what happened. Um, let's see. And here off the article on IGN, it says Rockstar has announced it will be shutting down GTA Online and Red Dead Online for today for two hours to honor the legacy of George Floyd. Both games will have close. Uh, will have access closed between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Pacific time. Um, when, what day was this again? This was on June 4th. Um, they also tweeted this out. Rockstar followed up with his initial message by asking players to support victims of racial injustice by supporting a list of civil rights-based uh, charitable organizations. So what's your take on this, uh, Los? Um, I think it's like case by case on how companies should handle it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of companies have been putting statements out. Okay. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, all right, your statement is fine, but what are you doing? Right. Um, and I mean, rockstar. Okay. That's fine. You, I don't really see the, the point of shutting down servers for two hours. Um, 2K, for example, uh, the NBA 2K game, mm -hmm. they gave out, like, fr uh, free... So, you know, everyone has their own character in NBA 2K, their own basketball player that yeah. they created. Like, they gave out uh, BLM uh, shirts to all their avatars, to all their characters, oh, okay. which I think is pretty cool. That's, yeah. like, a pretty cool kind of thing to do. You can, you know, wear a BLM shirt on, on, your, on your character. Um... So shutting down the servers for two hours, eh, I guess. I mean, like <laughs> it could have could have been something cooler done in game. Uh, I know these are game companies. This is not, <laughs> you know. There's people protesting out there. There's, uh, uh, you know, people putting their lives in danger out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so what what video game companies do doesn't really, uh, you know. I mean, it's a it's a nice way to send your message. But I'm just saying, too, shutting down your servers for two hours, I think you could have done something different. Okay, what about this one? Call of Duty adds Black Lives Matter message to the game. Uh, this is again from uh, this is from actually from Polygon an article. Activision and Infinity War update Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Call of Duty Modern War, uh, Warzone on Thursday to add a clear message to the game's uh, Black Lives Matter. Players are now presented with a Black Lives Matter message during the loading screens. Part of a larger statement to denounce racism and injustice. Uh, the message reads as, our community is hurting. The systematic inequalities our community experiences are once again um, <clears throat> center stage. Call of Duty and Infinity Wars stand for equality and inclusion. We stand against the rac racism and injustice of our black community endures. Uh, until uh, change happens, the Black Lives Matter, we will never be the community we strive to be. Um, on top of this, I did hear as well that they've been combating like racial emblems, uh, tags, uh, like yeah. basically anything that would be considered racist, is racist uh, on their game. They've been like going after, which is kind of like stupid because it took them this long to do it. They should have been done this from the beginning. Yeah, like true. I, I see that shit all the time when I used to play COD like yep. for years. Then it's true. It's true. And that and and see case by case, the Call of Duty community, I think, is m much more riddled with racism. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, in their community. And that's one company that, yeah, they I'm, you know, I'm glad they put that little message there. Uh, they were shut down. Uh, oh, they did postpone the launch of the new season. And, oh, yeah, and they the did postpone the new season. The races went wild. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, people hating uh, the, the message on the on the game. I mean, 
those are things I'm glad they did. You're right. The whole banning and the racist, the players in the game. I mean, I mean that should have been done years ago. The the community is is really packed with racists. I mean, if you honestly, go and chat, honestly, most of like, the time in the lobby, you're gonna find someone there who's talking. Crap yeah, about honestly, from my perspective, and, I feel like like racism is like part of that COD community. Like mm -hmm. ever since I can remember, there's always been racism there. Uh, always de derogatory words towards uh, the gay community too. Like that that community, there's a reason why it's always been toxic. There's a reason there's memes of like kids nowadays wouldn't survive the old Call of Duty lobbies. It's because that shit was toxic as fuck. Yeah, and like, no, it's true. And like some has changed since then. Like the ability to block people, mute people, um, uh, not have to enter a lobby with certain type of people. Like that's changing. But it's still there, like. But I'm yeah. glad that the Activision or Call of Duty or Infinity Ward is finally doing something about it. It sucks that it took like this long to do it, and yeah. like, and it's honestly, it's it's like what I've been seeing all over Twitter too. I'm like, it's like, why is there so much of a huge argument in ending race racism? Why is it why like why are we fighting each other for mm -hmm. that? But anyways, yeah, I mean, they 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 added this message. I'm sure that other game companies are doing that too because on top of that. Moving on to our next part, PS5 reveal was supposed to be this past week as well. That got postponed, and you told me too that the Cyberpunk 2077 uh, gameplay reveal, like some more gameplay was going to be June 11th, mm -hmm. and that got postponed. Um, all these postponements, I mean, obviously it has to do with the Black Lives Matter movement. There's no way we could have avoided not talking about it. I don't want to avoid talking about it uh, because out of all the things that always become like come through, like here, news-wise, political-wise, I, this is like the one thing and I'm like, there's no reason not to talk about it because there's no reason to fight against it. Like the fuck is wrong with people sometimes? You know what I mean? But anyways, PS5 reveal postponed. We didn't get to see any games yet. We didn't know if they're going to reveal the, uh, the console yet, but again, like more, more leaks quote unquote have been coming out of like how many fans, the, the, the prototype <laughs> had, had six fans and that shit still looked like the, the like a V like uh like the bottom side of a Swiffer or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> uh I can't I can't wait to see it. They haven't said when they're gonna come back and like actually show their stuff. Uh but I think you said uh, Cyberpunk twenty seven seven will be showing their gameplay on the twenty fifth of June, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, I'm not sure when the PS four I, I think they PS5? did did give yeah, I'm sorry, the PS five reveal event. I think they give did give a date, but I don't remember it. But, okay. um, yeah, I mean, I'm not like it's fine. It, I I agree. This isn't really the time to be putting out your you know companies to be putting out their new stuff. Like, let the message be heard. And I know a lot of people don't hate it. I mean, don't like it. A lot of people are want you know don't don't care about the situation that's going yeah, on. Yeah, because yeah, I feel like it's one of those and... things where if it doesn't affect you, it doesn't matter to you. Like, if, it, mm -hmm. if it's never happened to you, why do you care? The, but, mm -hmm. but that's the situation we live in where a lot of people don't care about other people. They just care about what's going on in their own world. And some, mm -hmm. in a way, I do understand it, too, because, like, right now, for me, like, I don't have a job. I, I, I'm kind of, like, struggling to pay for a house. And, like, I have my own set of issues and problems. But that, that doesn't mean that it's going to take away from me caring about other people as well. I mean... Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. might have it bad right now, but other people have it a lot worse. I mean, people yeah. are dying for just yeah. the skin color. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Agreed. So uh, I, agree, you know, I'm, I, I can wait a week or a week or two for these events to happen. You know, um, if anything, it might even make them better. No. Uh, more time for them to fine tune it uh, and you know cater to their presentation. So. You know, uh, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, like, like you said, there's more uh, heavier stuff going on uh, that the country needs to focus on instead of a PS5 or Cyberpunk, right? So yeah. Um, just also, the, this is just a tweet from PlayStation. <clears throat> uh, we decided to postpone the PlayStation 5 event scheduled for June 4th. We will un we will understand gamers worldwide are excited to see PS5 games. We do not feel that right now is the time to cel for celebration, and for now, we want to stand back and allow more important voices to be heard. So that was uh, their message uh, concerning the reveal. 
Again, mm-hmm. we don't know. They haven't set a date yet I, I'm from reading this article. Oh, okay. So oh, okay. as of right now, it's kind of like in limbo again. In limbo. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, from from all the like the 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 talk, you know, the 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 leaks, because people kind of already knew what was going to go on, like kind of like news outlets. Some of the rumbles are uh, we were going to get like uh, Bloodborne remastered, Jesus Christ, you know what I'm on PS5. Uh, there's rumbles of uh, res- a new Resident Evil game being revealed for PS5. Yes. And, uh, uh. There was a, there was a lot of talk about stuff that they were going to show. Uh, but anyways, they also said that even though they haven't set a date set a date yet, they still see they still assume it will be sooner than later. So maybe we'll see it sometime this week coming up, or maybe maybe in two weeks. But it should be soon, think- from what I'm hearing. Yeah, I think it's kind of smart, and I got to kind of putting a date on it because you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, things are changing daily. You know, you're seeing new footage, new new videos coming out daily. So yeah, who knows when it's gonna this is gonna be resolved? There's things to part. Uh... Hey, oh hey, how's it going? Man? <laughs> he joined us. But go ahead. You were saying Los? Oh, uh, but yeah, um, there's different things that, uh, you know, these mayors, these states are doing. So hopefully there's resolution soon. And uh, yeah, and maybe that's why uh, Sony's kind of waiting on putting a a final date on when they'll do the reveal event. All right. Uh, Well, let's go ahead and close that out for gaming and move into pop. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Sports. What the fuck? Sports! It's a home run! (laughs) Touchdown? (laughs) Uh, Sports. Uh, Well, according. Oh, oh, okay. Uh oh. Are we okay? We're good, JD? We're okay? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, the NBA approves a 22 team format. Is that for the playoffs, right? That, that that that's been confirmed, right? So, it looks like it has some games that are going to be like end of the season. Okay. And it's going to basically be like the final run <clears throat> like all, the teams that it's a two uh league. So that the teams that were close to either in the playoff spots or close to making the playoffs are going to play. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, right. Keep going. They're going to play and they're going to play the like 17 games. So this is like the final stretch. Like all the teams that I think were like two, three games out are in yeah. and, um, and, the uh, and they're going to play a final seeding, like final season. And then they're going to go into a, a playoff situation. And this is all going to happen in Orlando at the Disney, uh, you know, Disney oh, sports. <clears throat> yeah, let me let me whatever. read from the ESPN article here. The NBA Board of Governors voted Thursday to approve a 22-team format to restart the 2019-2020 season July 31st in Orlando, Florida, the league announced. Sources told ESPN that the vote was 29-1. to with the Portland Trailblazers voting against the proposal. Uh, I'm assuming that's because of Damian Lillard. Like, he was super against it, wasn't he? <clears throat> and uh, I don't, I don't, yeah. And I don't think they want to piss off their superstar. So Yeah, and are they out of position? I think they uh, don't like it because they're out of... <clears throat> uh, let me see here. Yeah, the National know, Basketball think... Association has been working closely with the league officials on the plan. And the NBA NBPA's... Team player representative approved the proposal Friday, sources told ESPN. Quote, the board's approval of the restart format is a necessary step uh, toward resuming the NBA season. And quote, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver said in a statement, while, here, let me actually pull it up on the screen as well. While, quote, while the COVID-19 pandemic presents formidable challenges, we are hopeful of the finishing the season in a safe, responsible manner based on strict protoco- protocols now being finalized with public health officials and medical experts. We also recognize that there that what that as we prepare to resume play, our society is re- reeling from recent tragedies of racial violence and injustice, and we will continue to work closely with our teams and players to use our collective resources and influence to address these issues in a very real and concrete ways, end quote. 
So, uh, so there's no talk of like the teams yet. Like, well, hold on, let me see if I can find them. I guess we would have to like pull up like the the actual NBA website to find the top six teams. Yeah, I'm not NBA really teams. sure of the teams, but mm-hmm. you know, I think it's a <clears throat> it's great. <laughs> Sports are almost back. Uh, you know, the mm-hmm. the players agreed to this. The owners majority agreed to it. So I think it's a win win. Uh, you get to play out the final games of the season. Which the the season was already almost at its end, anyways. Um, it was halfway, and so right? You ca- no, it was more than halfway. Because um, this happened and- in March. They're like it all started. Yeah, so March Madness would have been started real soon. And then after February that. would have been halfway. So yeah, like just just passed. And it was kind of already this. You know, you kind of already knew which teams were gonna make it into the playoffs. It was really the last spots that were being decided. Uh, so that's what they're going to decide now with this with this final, you know, end of the season kind of thing. I'm all for it. Uh, I didn't want the season to be canceled. I'm sure the players didn't want to either no, of after course all not. the hard work, after all the the trading and moves that were made this offseason. Somebody wanted to come out with the championship at the end of the season. And so I think this is a, a great for the players, uh, mm. uh, great for the league. Here I see the mm-hmm. – the preliminary expectations on the league's plans for the 22 team format in Orlando include the season will be extended 16 days with five to six games per day. God dang. (laughs) There will be four hours between games on each individual court to accommodate overtimes, cleanings and warmups. The league will be using three courts in the complex for games in the eight game regular season format. Each team is expected to play one back to back. The NBA is expected to be aggressive in moving up the dates to start playoffs, playoff series when the previous round series come to an end. The NBA Finals format is expected to include games every other day. So that's what they're cool. planning for the for the for the return of the NBA season. Yeah, what what do you think, JD? I think it's good that they got a plan to come back and get, and then at least finish out the season. You know, and everybody's yeah. willing to work with each other and get it all done. Uh, I think it's it's. Again, you know, as long as they're safe about it, everybody should just make sure they got everything good to go. I think this is, this should turn out pretty well, and we should have a uh, a good end of the season. Uh, yeah. And unfortunately, it's, it's not going to get much time to prepare for next season, but you know, this at least gets some get some some completion for their uh, for their hard work. Yeah, and that's can, a good point. Done, so. That's a good point because come uh, fall and winter, they're already in the midst of their new season, so right. that's going to be a little. Uh, interesting how they work that out how are they gonna uh, work everything out with the new season when that initiates and supposedly you know from doctors scientists there's supposed to be a second wave of coronavirus yeah. you know yeah. that probably uh, sparks up and that's gonna be right during the NBA season so uh, yeah uh, I mean I think what they're trying to do is let's worry about this season let's worry about this right now Come next season, we can worry about that then. Um, right. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad sports are very close. It's it's a little ways off. This ain't till the end of July. But hey, whatever they did to do to come to terms, uh, that's fine. All right, and uh, moving on to the MLB. Uh, on well, the they, other end of the <laughs> Yeah, on the other <laughs> end of people that can't get it together. Uh, MLBPA <laughs> stands firm against additional pay cuts. Resoundingly rejects league's plans. Uh, according to ESPN's article, Major League Baseball players will not take another pay cut and have resoundingly rejected uh, the league's plan to begin the season, according to a statement Thursday from Union Executive Director Tony Clark. The statement came from after a two-hour conference call of the association's executive board and several other major league player uh, players, association player leaders. And one day after the league rejected a proposal from the players to play 114 games with full prorated salaries. The league wants to uh, drastically reduce the schedule in order for owners to be able to pay players uh, on a per game basis. Quote, Earlier this week, Major League Baseball communicated in its intentions to schedule a dramatically shortened 2020 season unless players negotiate salary uh, concessions, end quote. Clark said, quote, the concessions being sought are, sought are in addition to billions in player salary reductions that have already been agreed upon, end quote. So basically, they don't want to take another pay cut uh, because for them, their season hasn't started for shit. 
So they haven't gotten paid for anything. So for them, I they were like, no, I signed this contract. Like you already took one pay cut. I want I want the rest. What are your thoughts, guys? <laughs> um, I think that the MLB players, it, it's a different situation. I feel they're not yeah. all in in this season, like you said, because they haven't played. Unlike the NBA players that have spent months and months going at it to try yeah. to get to a playoffs and a championship. So they have some skin in, in, in the game, right? They want to get it. They want to some... finish it through. Yeah, exactly. MLB players, they never started the season. So to me, it's like, well, we can really go a whole year without playing then. Yeah. I mean, whatever. So the MLB players, they put their proposal out there. It, it's kind of like done. They asked for what they wanted. The MLB owners have keep coming back with new offers. And I think the uh, MLB players ha at the end are finally like, you know what? We're not even going to give you a counter offer because we've already given you uh, what we want. And if that, uh, so they didn't even give a counter offer this time. There, there's just debt talks are done as of right now. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not re on this new one. I know that before the the players wanted prorated, like, hey, if we play this amount of games. Yeah. I think the big one about this deal was that the owners wanted to still ex still play out the full season. Is my understanding is that even though months have gone by, the 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 owner still wanted a full season to be played out. So extending usually the 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 uh the world series takes place mm -hmm. in october so this means that games would be played out till november and the players are worried that well scientists are saying that's when things are going to spark up we don't want to play in november so we, the players wanted the season shortened and prorated and the the owners first they were like hey we want a short season but we'll cut your your pay players aren't with that then the, the the owners are like, we'll pay, okay, we'll pay you your salary, but we want a full season played, and the players don't want that. So mm. it, it, they just can't seem to come to terms. Um, I'm gonna just have to side on the on the players on this one because you know owners have billions uh, of dollars, so that's who I'm siding with. So, yeah. My question is, these guys are gonna get paid whether we're, whether they're playing or not right now, right? I don't think they are unless they have guaranteed contracts, right? Yeah, yeah. Only, and only like top players have guaranteed contracts, uh, gotcha. and it's not all their contracts. It's a certain amount. Yeah, but for they, example, they Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole, one of the probably the best pitcher in the game. The majority of his contract is 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 uh, guaranteed because he's he does he's one of the top players in the league. But no, like for the most part, not everyone has guaranteed contracts like that, so they're not get paid. Well, I mean, my, my or if they are, it's a much less uh, amount. These guys that are getting paid, and they're they're you know this 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 whole agency is having problems figuring out. While they're screwing around with this, there are people who aren't getting paid. The people who work the stadium, the people <clears> who <throat> take care of everything else on, on you know the field, the stands, everything like that, they can't work because they don't have a, the the job that they need to do is not there. So this is this is dragging it out even longer for them, you know. And I mean, it's it's I, it, honestly. I would say, for me, I would say, you know, the, the worrying about November when it hasn't even come, you know, about the outbreak in November, you know, I'm using that as an excuse. Okay, yeah, that's a predicted estimate. Play until you can, and then if something happens then, okay, great. You can't do it, but at least, you know, put your heart out in there and do this for the, you know, this is, people, they're, they're doing it again, they're doing this for the money, forgetting why they came into the game, and which is, you know, play for the love of the game. Now they're just playing for the love of the money, and they're not actually... So both, I mean, I, I'm granted both sides need to need to work this out and need to get their get their s together. Um, but if it's if it's just a money issue, I don't. Uh, again, I'm not. I'm still not happy with the with players today. If they're worried more about money than they were about playing, you know. And there's a bunch of people out there who can't do this. You know, who want to do this and who can't because they just don't have the talent. And these guys are in there just taking advantage of it. So. Yeah, but the owners are taking advantage of them. Like your comments, like, like I slightly agree with them, but then I don't. Only because you have to understand, like, they're on a different plane when it comes to their finances and their world. Like, for them, like, just take it as an example. If you were making millions of dollars and then all of a sudden somebody wants to take that away from you because uh, they want to keep taking, giving you a pay cut, pay cut, pay cut, because they just want you to play. Doesn't matter if it's like a virus, uh, 
uh, of riots going on. We need you to play to make money for us as well. So for them, it's a whole different ballpark when it comes to that situation. It's like once you're in that level of like echelon where it's like you're making millions of dollars, like it, it, it's it's just a different world for them. Like I understand it. I probably would never reach that, but I understand it. That's why I'm like, I don't, I don't fault them for like fighting against that, for fighting against pay cuts. I mean, if anything, we already seen um, owners and uh, uh, some players like actually give out like money to people that are working at the stadiums, people that uh, like are trying to like don't get that luxury of millions of dollars being added to their bank accounts every other year or whatever, like. Like, I, I understand where, where these players are coming from. And for them to fight it, I would stand behind that, too. Because these these owners, honestly, most of these teams, these organizations for them, it's just it's just side money. Like, it's not it's – usually it's not their main source of revenue. So, for them, it's like, like we just need you to make some money for me, man. Please, come on. That's I mean, that's that's really it, it is. It's like chump change yeah, for them. I, I'm so, not like, I'm not, I'm not going to fault the players for fighting against that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna feel bad for billionaires. Yeah, you know, not making another half a billion dollars this season, um, and they can easily pay their yeah. employees. I mean, you've had players play employees because the nation won't. I mean, woe is me. I'm not gonna feel bad for any billionaires. Well, you also um, gotta remember right now that yeah, these billionaires are making money off of stadiums. They're probably also not making a whole lot of money off the other businesses right now either, because a lot of things got shut yeah. down because of coronavirus. Well, so it's, it's not like it's not like maybe you should save some. No, I mean, but I that's know. the same it's thing not... too. That's another level yeah. of, of just money that we probably will never reach, and that's a whole another level of like their issues and problems. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I kind of understand everybody's uh, perspective here, yeah. but as far as like this this one between the players and owners, I would stand with the players more than with the owners. But uh, uh, let's move on to the last part here in sports. Drew Brees. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, baby Drew, <laughs> baby Drew, baby Drew. You were the baby man Drew, in my fantasy league know? when I used to play, baby. You done fucked up, baby. Um, so Drew Brees <laughs> is under fire. He made a little bit of uh, an uproar with some comments he made regarding the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, quote, this is from Drew Brees, quote, Never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag of the United States of America. End quote. Um, Drew Brees also said, quote, I also stand with my grandfathers who risked their lives for the country and countless others, military men and women, and they do it on a daily basis. End quote. Now, these, these comments right here don't seem too bad, but the problem is that he was tone deaf to the reasoning for the kneeling, the reasoning for the the protest going on now i mean it was never about the flag it's been that's been like said abundantly clear many times is it was the start of a peaceful protest that nobody listened to everybody just changed the subject to the flag and now we have what's going on now so but let me also say afterwards he did apologize even though after his comments came out a lot of his teammates a lot of players around the league uh, Godfather LeBron James were all like against it. Twitter was ready to cancel Drew Brees, but he did apologize. He even wrote a letter to Donald Trump, our president. And now we're kind of like, well, let's see if he'll talk, walk the walk, not just talk the talk. What are you guys' thoughts? I can I can kind of see. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if it was fully uh, directed towards. Um, what was going on with with the uh, kneeling of the flag? Because there were some of the protests that have been burning the American flag too. So that might have been some of his pro some of his frustration might have been directed towards that as well. But you're right; it was the wrong time to kind of do that because he need it, it, it again. Twitter you don't have a whole lot of ex, a lot of, of characters to express everything you want in one tweet. You probably should have put that in a different format if you wanted to and express oh, no, a little no, bit more is, about. Uh, he said he said this on a talk show, like on a podcast or something. Oh, did he? Okay, yeah, okay. I, I, didn't, I, 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 saw I just saw that. I just saw the uh, quotes. I didn't see the where mm -hmm. it was from. So, okay, yeah, then yeah, he probably should have been a little more expressive about what he was talking about rather than just you know a single single statement about and and, and let it be directed toward single toward a certain part of the movement. He probably should have been more uh, descriptive in what he was what he was upset about. So, I, I have a lot of. 
problems with the whole situation. Um, Drew is entitled to his opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's America. He can. He he's entitled to his opinion, even though it's not really based on fact. But he 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 can he can say whatever he like. He can think whatever he like. Expressing that opinion during this time, not the b- greatest idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe he didn't think it was gonna get picked up. Maybe he was in a podcast. He thought, oh, no one's gonna listen to this crap. Well, he's Drew Brees. <laughs> you know, you're the leader of a whole city, basically. Everyone looks up to New Orleans, a predominantly yeah. black city. Um, so not great at saying the statement. Uh, even though that's what he thinks, I'm. I, 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 anybody could could express their opinions, but you know, he has to take to a fact. Like I said, he's a pre- predominantly black city. He he's in predominantly black league, and a lot of his teammates are black. And these are players that look up to him. That he's a leader in that team. So you got to put that into into consideration as well. Like, hey man, I got to work with these guys. You know, I got to try to win championships with these guys. I gotta I gotta be in the trenches with these guys. Like, let me take that into consideration. My other problem is how in the same day he went back on it. So. It, oh yeah, he me, was getting so much backlash over it. Like a lot of players, a lot of, even and, his and, own teammates were coming out like saying they were hurt. Yeah, they didn't. Exactly. They felt this he was is, extremely self-centered. That's the main thing is yeah. you're, you're working with these people. If Drew Brees was retired and he didn't, you know, fine, he can say. I mean, a bunch of retired people have said their stuff, and it doesn't matter. They're, they, you know, they're retired. They're not working with anybody. But in this case, you got to go day in and day out and fight with these guys, and that's gonna cause problems and i'm sure in the locker rooms be- in the years ahead before he's heard the real reason behind these these uh kneelings uh, so for him to bring up the flag again is kind of t- is like you like y'all said tone deaf and then for him to reel it back in and apologize at the end of the day I, you can't really take that apology i mean no I, that's what sure, i'm saying like I, for me like okay you apologize that's fine but you can Talk all day. I want to see you walk it. You know what I mean? I want to see you like live by it too. Yeah, but I don't think that's gonna happen either because that's what I'm saying. Like I want to. What he said is what he believed. Trying though. Uh, Okay, sure. I mean, uh, I'll give him that. You know, but you know, I I was a big Drew Brees fan. I Uh, was too. He was my. He was always my quarterback for for fantasy. (laughs) Yeah, like the guy's really great despite his age. uh, All the things he's done for New Orleans, like. That's to me. It's crazy because he has walked the walk. the 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 amount of charity he's done for the city of New Orleans is outstanding. I mean, yeah. it's he's really going above and beyond. But the words he said didn't match. Is that like the guys walked the walk, and that's why the words were surprising to me. I'm like, whoa, do you not? You've been supporting the black community for for years, and it's just yeah, it's it's very weird, very weird. Uh, very weird uh, situation, but yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Oh, I'm, I'm, no, 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 I understand I what you're saying words too. With that one. I, I, now, now, yeah, you're making me like feel like he probably he was toned up to what the reasonings were and like what mm-hmm. he said. He didn't mean it in any way where he was trying to go against like the black community. Uh, if anything, you're right. He was expressing his own opinions on it. Yeah, and he was just like, like, "Look, I had I had family members who fought for this country, and that flag means a lot to me. And the fact that you're doing that is like, I don't agree with that." Yeah, yeah. So no, I understand JD where he was right. coming the, from, but the, yeah, we, we don't know what led to that question, the conversation that led to that answer. So it may have been a point about the flag flag burning, and I totally agree with that. Like, you, yeah, no, no I didn't. I didn't catch the whole interview, but I. I yeah, yeah I'm exactly. Looking, I'm, so it I'm might looking. Be I'm looking hang on, hang on. I'm looking at the interview. Uh, what the interview the actual question right now is this. Um, read Dan Wright asked Drew Brees what the star NFL quarterback thinks about players kneeling again when the NFL season starts. Oh yeah, that's, that's what right, he said. That's right. I will never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag of the United States of yeah, America. Well, of our there country. you go. You know. There you go. I mean, I can't. It's so crazy so, so though because he he's been a. No, it, 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 it's just that he didn't. He just sees it as like just playing yeah. as as just but it, it, as what he sees like in front of the cover. Me. He's not reading the yeah. book. But it's crazy to me, man, because you know all these other people that would say that. Okay, but Drew Brees has been a huge leader in the black community in New Orleans. Like 
it's crazy the amount him and his family have done. Yeah. And it's just like, what? Like, bro, uh, I, I don't get it because you've done so much, right? I mean, I don't know. It's just very weird. Uh, so his actions have spoken a lot for him, yeah. and his, but his words now contradict everything he's done. It's very weird. All right. Uh, anything else you wanted to add, JD? Or no, no, that's that's pretty much okay. Covered. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna end out, uh, close out sports right there, and move into our final topics in pop culture. Pop. pop. <laughs> oh shit! I was almost singing. Uh, <laughs> let's start off with AMC. AMC is a if little. I could clap. It's a little scary right listen. now. It's a <laughs> little bit of a. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, according fail, to this fail, Polygon fail. article, AMC fears the worst for the future of movie theaters. Uh, according to this article, the existence of movie theaters is in question as the as the COVID nineteen pandemic keeps multiplexing multiplexes and art houses close, and the release calendar remains up in the air until safe reopenings are imaginable. Theater chains are bracing for the worst. In a financial feeling published Wednesday, AMC Theaters, the largest chain in the U.S., warned that it expects to report a net loss of between $2.1 billion and $2.4 billion for the first quarter of 2020, compared to a net loss of $130.2 million for the same period in 2019. The company will release its full quarterly earnings report on June 9th. So... Wait, don't Maybe you should have not bought that cup of coffee. Here? Um, um, not that I know. Of. No, I, I think so. I thought they were. They were. No, only... Oh, I know there are some that are opening up this month, but they're taking certain requirements. But I don't know about AMC. Uh, it, this is another movie chain that I've heard oh. is opening. Uh, later this month, but maybe they should have not bought that cup of coffee every day. Maybe they should have saved those uh, that <laughs> money. I mean, that <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever. It's a uh, uh, but these guys charge you ten dollars for popcorn, ten dollars for a drink, you know, twenty dollars to see a movie. Like, bro, well, yes, you because saved, that's you what I was saying last money, time. Bro. Like, their their money doesn't come from the ticket sales; it comes from the concession stands. That's why yeah, they charge right. you so much because that's where their money I comes from. I understand. And they charge a shitload and a lot of people go to the movies. <laughs> Shouldn't have bought the cup of coffee every day. <laughs> JD, what's your take on this? Ed? Um, it'll be interesting to see how they're going to recover from this because, yeah, it's it's interesting that they've lost this much money when they haven't really even been open. So you would think that, you know, not a, you know again, not yeah. having to pay salaries, not having to pay for, pay like, for electricity and other stuff. Do you have? Yeah, no, because their low-level employees are not paying. So who, what is going know. on here that you're losing billions of dollars right. and you're not even operating? Like, um, I do feel bad for the employees. I mean, these are people that, I mean, even though those I AMC mean, theaters are, are fucking trash, trash as crap, yeah. I mean, they're never fucking clean. Don't so ever whatever. go to the one on Dunville. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. It's actually been, been better. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, a little bit. But still, like, AMC theaters, for the most part, fucking dirty like whatever <laughs> what are those employees getting paid for but uh oh yeah i mean if anything that's the only thing i'm playing the small violin for is the employees um who who won't get paid but i mean there i heard rumors and this was like a, a month ago i thought i saw a report that amazon is looking to buy off amc this is a good so time amazon yeah they yeah, Amazon do. would then, and maybe they're waiting on AMC to give them a good offer. Because if I was AMC, probably, I would just sell. Waiting but, for it just to go lower and lower. Yeah, yeah, but right now that's the rumor I'm hearing. I heard was that Amazon was looking to buy, Should and imagine? that opens and up. You have Amazon yeah. Prime. You get some free movie ticket yes. every month or something. Holy shit! Oh shit! Damn. <laughs> See, I think he's like that just opens up a whole other avenue. I think well, obviously Amazon has the money to do it, so why not? Um, Hopefully concessions uh, would be cheaper, but probably not. You know, uh, <laughs> you can Amazon, you can order food from your Amazon Prime. Oh yeah, oh, Apple, get it same day. <laughs> yeah, uh, even though it's a terrible corporation, but hey, I'm all for it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. What do you? What do you? What do you guys think? I don't know. Okay. I think. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I was just looking on Variety. It's talking about the uh, Amazon Theater store. Amazon Theater stock soars on Amazon. Acquisition spec. I'm sorry, AMC theaters, soars on Amazon acquisition speculation. So it's 
if that is if there was if actually Amazon actually is buying it, going to talk to, uh, talk, talk about buying it, if that that shot their their, their stock prices up a lot, you know, by forty five percent. Exactly. So, so people, those stockholders are looking for a way out. They don't want to lose all their money, right? They, yeah, if, the, yeah. if the company goes bankrupt, those uh, those stockholders run a risk of losing their money. So yeah. of course so they want money, the they company well to sell. be better. Yeah, sell. At least I get some return for this stock that I have. Um, instead of just you know run the risk of losing it completely. When you, when your company goes into bankruptcy, first you pay off your loans, then your stockholders are priority, your employees. So uh, bear yeah. in mind, stockholders are ahead of employees a lot of the times, and pension. So there's a little uh, order that when you go to bankruptcy, all the money you have, you have to go in that order and pay out. There's a risk that that you know you don't have enough money to pay everyone out, so the stockholders run the risk. Of not getting any money if the game, uh, if the company goes to bankruptcy. Hmm. Right. All right. Uh, Marvel to regain Daredevil rights by the end of 2020. Um, so Netflix had the Marvel, uh, the Daredevil rights for a while. It was a great show. I hate that they canceled it. Netflix had it. Netflix yeah. Oh yeah. Netflix had it. Uh, it was a great show. And uh, yes, they canceled it late 2018. Uh, of course, you know, Disney Plus and uh, started popping up. Marvel wants to do their own shows on there. So that meant that they wanted to take off their, their IP off of other platforms. So Daredevil gone, Luke Cage gone, uh, Iron Fist gone. Who was the other one? Uh, Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones gone. And The Punisher. And The Punisher gone from Netflix. Now it's been uh, it's been two years since Daredevil. I think the other ones were almost canceled. been a year and a half right about now. About the same time, I think the last one was uh, Punisher that got canceled because they still yeah. had a season uh, to go. But anyways, uh, yeah, uh, sometime so apparently sometime this November we should be hearing rumblings of what they're gonna do with their characters now. Um, according to this IGN article, Marvel Studios won't have to wait longer until Daredevil can rejoin the MCU via Screen Rant. The fan campaign known as Save Daredevil has calculated that only six months remain until the rights to Daredevil transfer to Netflix, ne transfer from Netflix back to Marvel. Due to the nature of the contract between Netflix and Marvel, the latter isn't able to use characters like Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones until two years after the cancellation of their respective shows. Netflix canceled Daredevil in late 2018, meaning Marvel will regain, regain the rights to, uh, to the rights to the character in November 2020. So, yeah. so looks what like are you guys' thoughts on this? They're going to get back ah. Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and, and Daredevil all around the same time. So I think it'll be interesting. I, th I think they said that uh, they was looking. I think there are plans to put Daredevil in the actual MCU universe as far as the movies go. Can I say something? Yeah. If yeah. they brought back the same actor, I they really won't. liked him as no, Daredevil. They, won't. they already it's, talked. Well, to right him. now, there's no plans to. But yeah, they already, uh, they already I they had an interview with him, and he's like, "If there's anything going on with Daredevil, I have no idea because I haven't heard it. anything." Uh, see, I would really like that man if they brought him back. As the care, I mean, I think he really. I think the Netflix writing there was a lot there to to be like wanting. Like I, the writing wasn't great. A, a lot of you know, you got a lot of gaps in the seasons where it just wasn't that great, and until you yeah. get to a high point in the series. But I really liked the casting. I really liked the, the the people they chose to portray these characters. That's something that I really give props to Netflix. They really chose these people well. So I, 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 ideally, I would want Disney to continue to utilize them. Just, just keep the, 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 the stories that were made, make them, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. um, make them those stories legit in the MCU universe. Canon, uh, right? Canon. Yeah, make them canon. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and just bring them into the MCU universe. I would really like it. Is that um, gonna happen? You you guys are probably right. Most likely, it's not gonna happen. No, well, here, but, uh, if I continue I really reading from IGN's article, fans were briefly given hope that Daredevil star Charlie Cox might reprise the role in the upcoming third Spider-Man movie. Unfortunately, Cox shut down that rumor, telling ComicBook.com, "Quote: I hadn't heard those rumors, but it's certainly not with my Daredevil. I'm not involved in it." End quote. Sorry. <laughs> Who knows? He might be lying. He might just <laughs> he, the contract. 
He has an and and you're right, and, uh, they're double blind. He probably can't read that contract, so he hasn't even seen it. He hasn't seen it. You're right. He probably you know can't say that he's gonna be in the movie. That would spoil the whole movie. So uh, yeah, because yeah, I mean, maybe uh, look at what happened with Game of Thrones and um, you know Kit Carson or Kit Harrington, sorry, with with John, with Jon Snow. You know, he had that whole time where he couldn't say what was gonna happen with Jon Snow. Maybe it's the same thing with this. You know, maybe he's just they're trying to keep it a surprise. We don't know. Come on, Marvel, you know? please, Marvel. Please. Uh, yeah, I think I think if if it's if they see enough of a fan base is saying, hey, we want this guy back, is Daredevil, bring him back. I, I, I think they're probably going to cave into that and say, hey, okay, come on, let's get you back in here. Let's let's see what we can write into, into the story for you and move with it. So. All right, right after you know this whole movement going on, we'll make it trend on Twitter. All right, bring him <laughs> back. Bring, bring Charlie back. Bring Charlie back. Yeah. I would like to see Luke Cage in there as well because I really liked him. I mean, I was yeah, uh, no, I really enjoyed because I, I remember reading that as a I remember reading that as a kid. You know, reading Luke Cage as a kid. No, like I said, and, the writing most it man Jessica Jones. I couldn't get through it. I couldn't get and through I really it. And I, I really like her. I really like her. She pissed me off. Where uh, I forgot what episode it was. She was getting kidnapped and she's supposed to be like super strong or whatever. And then she couldn't yeah. stop like regular guys. I'm like, fuck this show, man. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't stand seeing that. I was like, this is so no, stupid. It, you're you're it was supposed depressing. to be like super it was strong depressing. and vulnerable. I don't know yeah. what else like, had. I get it. You know, she's experienced traumatic stuff, but this whole thing with kill, bro, kill, kill, Gore. Gore. kill Gore. Killian, 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 yeah, that's right, yeah, Killian, just kill over something else. Yeah, yeah, just the whole. Come on, man, just yeah. kill, <laughs> kill you. Let him kill you, or you kill him. Something happened. Let's get this over. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, well, again, uh, again, we're gonna end pop culture with uh, talk a little bit about the Black Lives Ma uh, Matter movement. We want to, uh, again, it's something unavoidable. We just. Uh, like, why would you even want to try to avoid talking about this? What's so? Why is there such talk? So many conversations about uh, our arguments of why we should end racism. And <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, well, I wanted to give you uh, get your guys' uh, thoughts on this whole situation that's going on. Um. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's pretty simple, man. Uh, you know, and. And it's a shame that it's it's uh it's gotten to this point because it's been it's been you know said for the past years right BLM didn't just pop up this time it's been peaceful protests for many years um you know the whole Colin Ka Kaepernick situation was exactly a peaceful pro pro protest to avoid situations like this but in the end the message is uh you know certain people minorities want to be able to you know not have to worry when they're out in public uh uh it's as simple as that they just want to be treated as equals um and i think this movement will not only affect uh you know people of color but minorities overall this is a uh something that i think will will uh, affect minorities uh for good in the end so uh you know change has to happen you know in the judicial system and and to stop you know treating you know black people uh this way so i i, I agree with the message it's not really that hard uh, to mm -hmm. understand and i just want you know i just hope people empathize and and you know uh get you know, who people who maybe haven't experienced any any uh, uh, prejudice against them, uh, kind of empathize and and realize that okay, I might I, I might never have uh, faced this, but you know I I understand that these people have, and you know uh, I want to understand them better. I want to understand the situation. I want to learn, and that's it. All right, JD. You know, I'm. I, I agree with their with the concept. I agree with what they're trying to do. I mean, it's it makes sense. You know, I, again, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm neon clear. I will never understand what they have to go through. You know. Right. So I mean, it's just. It, it's it's a problem that, that I will never. Ha I probably will never have to face. But, and I, 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 I I've I've sold this to somebody else. Who said, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, if you're silent, you're part of the problem. The problem is, I don't need to spot a bunch of pretty words, everybody, to tell you how I feel. I know who I am, and I know how I act. But everybody of any color. You know, again, like you know, as everybody, anybody who's watched the show, uh, watched the show knows, I'm ex-military. You know, we we didn't. The only colors we saw were red, white, and blue. Okay. You know, and that was that was the only colors we acknowledged. 
<clears throat> everybody else, you know, we were equal, equal under everybody's eyes, you know, under the eyes of everyone. It didn't matter. So, um, and again, I, and I support these guys, you know, and it's wholeheartedly. I said, you know, if you're out there peacefully protesting, you know, to make a change, and a lot of these guys, well, peaceful protests won't do it. You haven't seen all the peaceful protests going on. I mean, they're blocking traffic, they're blocking streets, they're standing in front of courthouses, peacefully protesting and doing this. The problem is, you've got these rioters who are taking advantage of this and overshadowing the, the the movement and overshadowing what it looks like, and those guys need to stop. You know, that's 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 not helping. That is that is effectively hurting the whole concept and the whole process of what these guys are trying to do. And to those who are saying, well, you know, riots are going to help get the you know get the word out. No, they're not. I mean, how many riots have we had in the past 30 years due to due to uh, you know civil rights issues? They didn't do anything. All they did was escalate the issue and make it even worse for everybody else. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if, you, if, you, if people are out there writing for the Black Lives Movement, you guys need to stop because you're hurting your help. You're hurting the issue. You're not helping it. You know. And and but to an extent, you know, yeah. I'm I'm I mean, there are certain parts of it I don't agree with. You know, I don't agree with the destruction of the flag. I I, I respect their right to do it. I, that's what I fought for. They give them the rights to be able to do these kind of things. I don't agree with it. But you know, everything else, like I said, if they're if they're out there doing this, what they're what their constitutional right to do, to make a change, to try to affect a different way of life for themselves, make it better, and make make people understand that they, this is what they go through and how they need to fix it. Go for it. You know, I'm all with you guys. All right. Uh. Well, yeah. So uh, I've been I've been giving my opinion this whole time. So just for me, just why are we fighting this? Just don't be a racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyways, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're going to end it right there. Thank you so much to everybody who's been hanging out, uh, listening on podcast platforms everywhere, uh, like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, thank you to everybody who's watching us on the YouTube side. Um, but right before we end this, do you guys have any final punches? Uh, yeah. Uh, be nice to each other, man. Uh, <laughs> that's it. That's my final punch today, man. Just be nice to each other. Stop. If you have hate inside of you, man, figure that shit out. Because you're just throwing it out at other people when really it seems to be problems with yourself. So figure that shit out. JD? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of saying, you know, be nice to each other. Honestly, I don't get the whole racist thing, you know, you know white being more more powerful. Because if you look at it, stereotypically, blacks are, blacks are stronger. They're faster. Hell, most of them are smarter. Where the hell is white superiority at? I mean, we are not superior to anybody right now. So, why are, why are people why are people thinking white's the best race? No, it's not. You know, we're on, and again, it's not a race. We're all human. We're all human race. You know, we're different colors, different creeds, but we are all human race. We're all the same race of being. We need to yeah, respect each other in the same, together, same yeah. exactly respect each other in the same manner. You know, and love each other. Not, I mean, you can't you can't live a life of hate and towards somebody just because of who, what color they are. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work. So, you know, just wish, we need to work on fixing the way way of thinking, and, and that, that's the first step to getting this uh, resolved. All right, my fun punch is, I finally found somebody for Apex, bro. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw that you won some matches. Yeah. That's good man. Yeah, I finally you got a good squad. Winning. Finally, I finally got a teammate. <laughs> he's his name is Riser. I'm gonna be giving that man a shout out because he's been super like positive, super helpful. He's he has a sexy, deep ass voice. Every time he talks, I oh, get really? the moist. It's amazing. Wow. If you guys want to go hear him, check out no, my Elias. YouTube video on JRX Force <laughs> YouTube channel. Uh, so much today. Bro, Did he's gonna blow up. I feel it. I feel it in my 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 shins. Um, but all right, that's gonna be it for us today. Thank you so much for everybody who's listening and watching. Catch you guys next time. Bye bye. Peace.